It's a very exciting time. The next 50 years will be the golden age of cardiovascular disease. The opportunities to prevent heart and vascular disease, to make people's lives who have heart and vascular disease better and easier, and to correct the ravages of heart and vascular disease by regenerating hearts in their entirety are enormous. As a patient said to me, we're not building organs, we're building hope. It's phenomenal to be able to imagine a time when we can take our knowledge of stem cells, our knowledge of organs, and build solutions for people with heart disease. Truly rebuild a functioning heart that we can transplant so that we're not only the creators of the total artificial heart, but the creators of the total bio-artificial heart that lets you live the rest of your life with the solution built at THI. The progress that is being made in the field of uh, prevention of a stroke and treatment of uh, common arrhythmias with the uh, revolution that was made by catheter ablation techniques is exciting. The uh, progress will help patients have safer, faster, and uh, more curative results from the procedure that we do every day. Valve disease is a product of aging and the American population gets older every year so that we are seeing more and more valve disease with each passing year. At the same time, we now have the ability to replace heart valves through the skin as opposed to requiring uh, heart surgery, at least in some cases. For all of those reasons, this is an extremely exciting time to be involved in the treatment of valvular heart disease. We're really excited about the prospect of stem cell therapy for treating patients with heart failure as well as other cardiovascular diseases. One extremely exciting development is that this year in the third quarter, the Heart Institute will be leading a worldwide study to evaluate the effect of stem cells in patients with heart failure. This is building on our prior experience and if this trial shows what previous trials have shown, uh, this will ultimately lead to approval of a therapy in the United States and in Europe. You see, the future today is, is that within the next uh, few years, maybe even a couple of years, it will be possible to have every single individual's uh, genetic information at the bedside. And that will be hopefully utilized by clinicians who have expertise in this area to benefit uh, of the patient uh, in their care, in their diagnosis, in their identification of those who respond better to therapy, in identification of those who potentially might develop the risk of side effects of two drugs, and help hopefully therefore better treatment, better diagnosis, and more specific treatment of individuals, and better outcome. This is the most exciting part of genetic research today, and we hope that tomorrow that will be at the bedside applicable to every single patient. Heart disease and cancer often coexist in the same patient. It is not widely known that cancer therapy uh, can cause heart problem. We have, we have identified the causes of uh, uh, cancer therapy-induced uh, cardiovascular uh, complications. Uh, in the future, we'll be able to predict 
and prevent and treat uh, cancer patients that are undergoing uh, a therapy to protect their heart so they, they can enjoy their life after cancer therapy. Women's Center is actually um, beyond need at this point as women, as you know, are dying in greater numbers um, than men. And I think it's time that we step up to the plate and address the needs and concerns of women. Our ultimate goal is to develop a device that we could take off the shelf and implant in these gravely ill patients with heart failure that would not only prolong their lives, but restore them to a full and active lifestyle. Because there are six million Americans that have heart failure and 350,000 of them die every year. So it's a huge unmet clinical need. We're addressing this with a number of very innovative programs right here at the Texas Heart Institute. In fact, one device developed in this lab has already been used to save thousands of lives. And the progress we're making toward the development of the first fully implantable continuous flow artificial heart shows incredible promise. And Dr. Frazier has devoted his entire professional career to the development of these devices. And under his leadership, we'll continue to make progress in the war against heart disease. I feel so very fortunate and so proud to be part of this team. The next 50 years will be very exciting, perhaps even more exciting than the last 50 years because the genes will be identified and the most dangerous ones knocked out. We'll regenerate the whole heart from stem cells. We'll develop the ability to predict heart attacks in advance of their occurrence by identifying plaques and arteries that are dangerous even if they don't lead to symptoms. And we'll have brand new ways to treat every imaginable cardiovascular disease until it's gone. I'd encourage everybody to read and learn as much about it as you can because these people up here are doing a fantastic, a fantastic job.